Horse Tales is proudly brought to you by the South Carolina Department of Agriculture. South Carolina, a true leader in the equine industry. Folks, we're down here in beautiful Aiken, South Carolina, horse country, folks. And today, we at Southern Equine Service, Dr. Jamie Carter and Dr. Tom Stenner. Another hard name to pronounce, folks, but he's going to be showing us all his services he offers here in Aiken and surrounding areas. And, folks, this is going to be a great, informative show, but you know when the old cowboy's around, it's going to be entertaining, too. So stay tuned for some great, informative equine information. Horse Tales is being brought to you today by Carolina Fresh Foods. Folks, we are Fresh Delicious. Equestrian Images, making memories together. Hey folks, Warren E. Coca Farm for the best coastal Bermuda hay available in the southeast. Brought to you by Southern Equine Service in Aiken, South Carolina, a full service equine veterinarian practice offering ambulatory and hospital services. There once was a hungry road that wouldn't let drivers get very far. It wore out their tires, forcing them to buy new ones time and time again. Then along came the Michelin man who proved the right tire changes everything. With long-lasting tires in place, those drivers were back on the road to saving money. Michelin Hydro Edge tires last up to 33,000 miles longer. Michelin, a better way forward. Folks, the PD Cowboy arrives for the brand, and my brand is Carolina Fresh Foods. We have a new product out on the range, so ride on into your local Piggly Wiggly or other fine retailer and ask for Carolina Fresh Premium Lick Order. And folks, if they don't have one in the crowd, tell them to get cracking and call the old PD Cowboy and his elite posse of chicken wranglers. Carolina Fresh Foods, the name says it all. We are Fresh Delicious. Did you know this thoroughbred racehorse industry in South Carolina supports about 2,400 horses and nearly 30 trainers across the state? The payroll is some $20 million with 800 jobs. South Carolina, it's a matter of taste. Southern States carefully crafts every bag of Legends horse feed with the highest quality ingredients available. The Legends superior line of specially formulated feeds will help keep your horses happy, healthy, and in peak form. You and your horse have a special bond. To keep that bond everlasting, Legends Horse Feeds can accommodate every type of nutritional need a horse might have. Legends, redefining what horse feed should be. Visit your local Southern States dealer to see which Legends Feed is best for your horse. Agritourism is a combination of the state's top two industries, agriculture and tourism. Whether you're going on a trail ride or going to the farmer's market, you are supporting South Carolina agritourism. South Carolina, it's a matter of taste. Folks, joining me now is Dr. Jamie Carter. Hi. Jamie, you've got a nice little gray thoroughbred here, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah, tell me what we got going on. So what we're doing today, he actually came in for a pre-purchase exam and um, a uh, long history behind this horse. But he actually has some little tiny bird shot. You can see the little lesion right here underneath his skin. So at some point in his life, he had been shot um, with a load of bird shot. And he's got just one on this side, but what we're doing today, we're going to remove these these little tiny pellets out that's under the skin just in case they're causing any hindrance of his saddle fit or riding or anything else. He does eventing, so he uh, has to do three different things, and usually the saddles, there's several different type of saddles he would wear doing his job, so we're just trying to make sure he's not having a problem from that. Well, he might have been a bird hunting plantation horse, you reckon? He could have been. He could have been, been, for sure. Um, but I thought you was kidding me. No, it's, it's real. <laughs> we're going to try to get these out, and we'll show you some pellets here after we get these out. So we're, we're actually clipping a small area over them. We're going to put a little bit of numbing agent in there, and um, then we're going to come in and take a tiny incision and remove the pellet, and then 
um, do some tissue glue on the skin and glue it back down, and hopefully we can just get by with that without having to put suture in. Jamie, who's our assistant? This is Megan Garvey. She's one of our technicians. She works with me day to day um, on, on the road and in-house. And what she's doing is she's doing a sterile prep on the skin. Uh, as of course we never get the skin sterile but we get it as, as sterile as we can to do any procedure with whether it's a joint injection or a surgical site and you can see we've got multiple lesions here that we're going to um, prep block and then remove these little pellets out the skin of the horse. I and think that was a modified choke he was using, Jamie. Probably was. It was a little <laughs> tight pattern, wasn't it? <laughs> little tight pattern. He has a few more back in here in his thigh on this side. We're not too worried about those because there's no gear that actually has to go on the skin back here. Um, the biggest concern we have is where the saddle fits and where the girth goes. And you can see all this is right where the saddle would be and all these are where the girth would go. And um, so we want to remove those so we take anything out of there. So what we're doing here, this is actually a little bit of local block and we're actually going to do a little tiny bleb right underneath this so that he won't feel too much pain when I make my skin incision. As you know, horses have a pretty strong truncal muscles underneath their skin that they actually can shake flies off with and, and do that. When you're brushing, you'll see them shake and, and do that. So what we're doing now is taking the sting out of this so that we can make our little incision to remove these pellets pretty easily. So you think that's just one pellet each place? Each little spot is one, there's one or two pellets, like this one has two in it. You can see that truncal muscle move in there then. So what we're doing now is making a tiny skin incision. He doesn't even feel it. Yep, that was our goal, is for him not to feel this with that little bit of block we put in. Okay. So this is a first for you? <laughs> yeah, on a horse. I've taken them out of dogs before. There wow. went the pellet. I should have caught it. I, I, somehow I dropped it. Wow. But the pellet popped right out of there. It looked like a number eight, didn't it? Yeah, it did look like a number eight. <laughs> we can probably do one All right, more. Whoever right did here. this, we're going we're gonna to get DNA on that pellet. We're going to get the CSI involved in that pellet. There part. you go. Easy, buddy. We're going to have to put you on that reality si uh, series, Dr. Carter. Dr. Pole or whatever, he's got nothing on you. <laughs> yeah, Dr. Pole does a little bit different thing, so. Yeah, I think he goes looking for trouble. Yeah, sometimes they end up with a lot of stuff. We don't do cows at our practice, we just do horses, so. Let's see if we can mash that one out of there a little better. That's just amazing. And it wasn't, I'm sure it hurt him when he got shot, but it wasn't causing him any uh, yeah, no, discomfort. No, we just made sure, making sure that we don't create something with the saddle. Um, so as you see where all these are again. Well, what did you, uh, you just pleasure rode uh, Gray when you had him? Yes, he just was a pleasure horse for me. And um, he trained some guys to actually um, go to the racetrack and actually, so he's actually trained a little bit as a racehorse, not that he's a racehorse, but he's actually trained a little bit for that and, and taught some guys how to really, how to go out and gallop and because he was so good minded. Um, well, he's very versatile, isn't he? Yes, sir. Here's the pellet. If you can see right there, you can see the pellet. Okay. Yeah, barely. Yeah, barely, barely see the pellet right there. Oh, there you go. Now you can yeah. see it there. Yeah. It's kind of encapsulated around there. I'm going to see if we can catch this one a little bit better than our last one. So that's the pellet. You can see on that background, you can see the pellet right in there. Folks, that was a Smith and Wesson number eight. Well, Dr. Carter, wasn't expecting that, but that was quite a treat. Well, we're going to move on to some more of your services you offer, okay? Thank you. Yes, sir. Hi, I'm Dr. Rachel Beats here at Southern Equine Service. And uh, my specialty here at Southern Equine Service is I do a lot of the reproduction and I do a lot of the full work. Um, I also do, you know, just some medicine cases like today, what we're doing. If you have any questions or concerns or would like me to come take a look at your horse, just feel free to give us a call. Now back to more Horse Tales. Horse Tales is being brought to you today by 
King Street Auction Company, the leading auction company in the southeast. Dillon Meat Center, featuring Carolina Fresh Poultry Parts. Ride in and see Douglas and Terry Wayne Jackson today. By the South Carolina Agricultural Department, it's a matter of taste. Come join us at the PD State Farmers Market located on Highway 52 between Florence and Darns. We offer a full line of plants, flowers, and produce. We're open year-round, Monday through Saturday. South Carolina Agriculture. It's a matter of taste. There once was a hungry road that wouldn't let drivers get very far. It wore out their tires, forcing them to buy new ones time and time again. And along came the Michelin Man who proved the right tire changes everything. With long-lasting tires in place, those drivers were back on the road to saving money. Michelin Hydro Edge tires last up to 33,000 miles longer. Michelin, a better way forward. Folks, the PD Cowboy arrives for the brand, and my brand is Carolina Fresh Foods. We have a new product out on the range. So ride on into your local Piggly Wiggly or other fine retailer and ask for Carolina Fresh Premium Lick Water. And folks, if they don't have one in the crowd, tell them to get cracking and call the old PD Cowboy and his elite posse of chicken wranglers. Carolina Fresh Foods, the name says it all. We are fresh delicious. South Carolina's Market Bulletin has connected consumers and farmers for over a hundred years. From ag news to meeting notices to free ads, you can count on the Market Bulletin. South Carolina, it's a matter of taste. Dr. Carter, you offer all kinds of services. What are you getting ready to do here today? Yeah, we're getting ready to perform a routine dental, okay. um, which is done once a year. Okay. And basically, we put a full mouth speculum in. That's what this device here is. It's an old device that was designed in the late 1800s with the Calvary, um, because back then there wasn't many veterinarians, and so the Calvary took care of their dentals. And horse health starts in the mouth, as we all know, because if a horse can't chew properly, then they can't you know, digest their food well. Uh, if you see horses that are spitting out grain or dribbling hay or balling up hay, typically they have a tooth issue and they need to get addressed. So we recommend at least once a year. Uh, certain horses with typical mouth, uh, with a typical mouth about once a year. On a horse that has a true problem, we recommend every six months. Uh, that allows us, because a horse continually erupts their teeth up until they get to where they run out of tooth. And that can be at the end of their life at 30, 40, uh, some of them even 45 years old. Um, because the age range has changed a lot in the last 25 years, so horses do live a lot longer. What age do you recommend to start looking at their teeth? Typically we start as, as about 18 to 20 months old okay. when they start to get under saddle. Uh, we remove the teeth called the wolf teeth, uh, which is a benign little tooth. Um, that actually interferes with the bit in some horses. And then we start just floating, or, or which is what we're gonna do, we'll show you that in a second, but where we take the sharp enamel points off because horses live inside now and they're not out grazing. People always ask me the question, why do we do this where horses in the wild never get a float done? Horses in the wild are forage-based diets, so they actually graze all the time. 23, you know, 20, 22, 23 hours a day, they're grazing. And um, so they wear their teeth differently and their head's positioned down on the ground so their jaw positioning is better so they wear their teeth more properly. Horses in the wild would not typically have a tooth that would be aberrant or growing out because then, of course, natural selection takes place and, okay. you know, um, and, same and principle on the, the hooves. Same they, they, principle they on the They travel the water to feed yeah. to keep them right. worn down. And they keep them worn down, that's mm -hmm. right. So same thing with the teeth. This is a McPherson speculum. Okay. Or a full mouth speculum. Okay. So we're able to open the horse's mouth up as we go and we basically let it sit right on the incisor or teeth and we're able to open that mouth up now big. for this particular horse is this a routine yes this is a routine dental okay so we'll get all the little bits of debris out of there horses have some of them have little pockets there where they'll hold some food and I'm just palpating the teeth now, okay. uppers and lowers. And so she's just got a nice, normal, level, routine mouth. And so now what we'll do, we're going to use our hand tools. There's two different types of dentals that can be done. One's with power tools, such as a Dremel or a power float. And this is just a routine hand float. It's got a Tilts and Carbide blade on it that cuts when we go in. And so each float has a purpose and a place in the mouth. So we're actually working on doing the lower teeth right now. So how did... 
How are you determining how much is to be taken off? We just taking the sharp point off till we get it smooth. And uh, your hand was in there, you done figured that yeah. out, right? Yeah. Got you. All right. And so a lot of it turns into feel. Okay. I tell all the young veterinarians that work with us, we all learn how to do them by hand first before we use the power tools. And what we do is we, we basically, I tell them, until they get about 20, 25 dentals done, they don't get that feel yet. Well, you... You went to Clemson, right? Yes, yeah, so went, went to, to Clemson, Alabama. Lundgren, and then went to Tuskegee. Well, did they catch you running around the cafeteria, running your fingers in girls' mouths? You know, say, baby, you need a you need a job. No, that'd be pretty bad there. <laughs> <laughs> so what we're doing is just getting the tongue side or the bottom teeth, or okay. what's called the lingual side in vet terms, um, and we're just getting those leveled off. Because the way the mandible works, the mandible, the maxilla, the top part here stays still. The mandible moves in a side-to-side -side motion for chewing. So the mandibular teeth wear to the inside or to the tongue, and the maxillary teeth wear to the outside or to the buccal side of the, of the face. So we work on each, each set of teeth separately. Sounds like I was working on the fence the other day. <laughs> yes, and you can hear it when it changes and gets level. And then what I do is run my hand back in there and feel the edges so that I feel like I'm comfortable with everything. So you're taking the rough edges off? Yeah, just taking the sharp enamel points. We don't want to get past that because then the tooth has some minimum in it, just like ours do, and can create cavities just like in people. Horses don't typically get cavities. When he picks the, the, the feet up and he got those sharp edges, he just cracks them and it falls out, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, Dr. Carter, we've got a lot of information straight from the horse's mouth. What yes, you got sir. for us? Well, the last couple things is uh, we kind of went into the discharge of nasal passages. If you see anything odd like that, the other thing, you know, horses don't develop cavities. They have a very closely packed group of molars that actually wear off one another, and we just are taking off these enamel points. So you shouldn't see a tremendous amount of blood, like I said earlier, unless you're actually extracting a cap or a deciduous tooth or removing a tooth, uh, such as the wolf tooth or something like that. The other thing, sometimes in young horses, you'll see is you'll see bumps underneath the jaw here and typically up till they're four uh, and a half. These can be eruption bumps where the teeth are actually impacted. The caps, the baby teeth are impacted over. They're called caps, and they're the deciduous teeth. that hadn't shed out yet, so sometimes we see those. Um, you know, and then, like I said, about the bit alignments and all those things. Those are the other big keys. But uh, if you see those, you should contact your veterinarian and, and um, get that done. And here in South Carolina, we have a number of lay dentists that do teeth as well, meaning they're non-veterinary trained, but they've actually been trained in doing dentistry. And um, we do have laws on that here in the state, but they're still legal to practice here. But you should not have a lot of blood. As you see, we don't have any blood. Her mouth, um, there's no blood from her mouth. We're just taking off these sharp points. And um, basically, there's nothing else involved with it from there. So, Got a question. Why do they call it a wolf tooth? A wolf tooth because it actually looks like a little tiny fang sticking down. And we may see some of those later in, in some of the horses we've got, and we can show you one of those. So Very good. I always want to know that. Thank yes, you, Dr. Sir. Carter. No problem. Thank you. Hey, I'm Dr. Brady here at Southern Equine Service. My specialty is acupuncture and chiropractic services. We offer a wide range of, of options for you and your horse, so feel free to come on down to Aiken and, um, and visit us. Stay tuned for more Horse Tales. Horse Tales is being brought to you today by... Morell Tire Service, right on in and see Richard and his fine family of technicians to take care of your automotive needs. By Nationwide, and folks, you know when the PD Cowboy rides, he rides with Nationwide on his side. Ken Law Supermarket, Fayetteville, North Carolina, featuring a full line of Carolina Fresh three-pack frozen poultry program. Southern States carefully crafts every bag of Legends horse feed with the highest quality ingredients available. The Legends Superior line of specially formulated feeds will help keep your horses happy, healthy, and in peak form. You and your horse have a special bond. To keep that bond everlasting, Legends Horse Feeds can accommodate every type of nutritional need a horse might have. Legends, redefining what horse feed should be. Visit your local Southern States dealer to see which Legends feed is best for your horse. The South Carolina Horsemen's Council is the voice of the Palmetto State's equine industry. The South Carolina Horsemen's Council primary purpose is to provide information to the general public, the media and government agency about issues and activities that impact the South Carolina equine community. If you are a horse owner in the state of South Carolina, you need to be a member of the South Carolina Horsemen's Council so we can have a voice about equine issues in our state. For more information, go to schorsecouncil.org. 
When you hear the name Earnhardt, you might not immediately think of farming. But my family's been at it for years, just like Nationwide Agribusiness. In fact, they're the number one farm insurer in the nation. And with their On Your Side Farm Review, you get a personalized policy for your farm with the coverage you need at the right price for you. My family's trusted Nationwide for more than 30 years. To find out why, call your Nationwide Agribusiness agent today. Dr. Carter, I know we're not in Jiffy Lube. What we got here? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, this is this is a state-of-the-art camera called a gamma camera, mm -hmm. and what it is, it actually is, is in, in simple terms called a bone scan is what it generates. So we inject the horse with a radioactive dye called technesium, and the technesium is a dye that emits gamma radiation. It's a very safe radiation. I know it's hard for po folks to believe it's safe, but radiation can be safe. It's actually broken down every six hours, so in 24 hours that horse can walk, walk out of the stall and go to do its normal job. Um, but what it, what it does, this actual camera picks up gamma radiation that the horse's body emits. So if they've got increased blood flow to an area or decreased blood flow to an area, it'll show up on this as it turns it into an image. So if you look at the computer screen right behind us, this computer screen actually shows an image that was generated here. And you can see the difference. In, and this is the hawk. You can see the point of the hawk here on both sides. And you can see this very hot linear spot. We call it a hot spot in, on a bone scan in simple mm -hmm. terms. And that's basically a stress fracture. In that, in that bone. This is a normal growth plate in this leg because this is a young horse. And you can see the stifle here, it shows up those areas. So basically we use this camera to help us on horses that have lameness that we can't really localize, that we can't block it out during our traditional lameness workup. So this helps to see stuff that, that really wouldn't show up on a traditional radiograph. Sometimes it does, but in most parts it doesn't. We can look at the back of the horse that we can't radiograph because he's too thick. We can look at necks, heads, hips, teeth, um, anything that would be increasing blood flow, like I say, this technesium has an affinity for bone, so we see it in the static phase of bone. So you can see he's been counter-loading on this other leg, loading it more, so that leg's a little hotter, so to speak. And so that's, you see this hotter limb here on each side, and then you see that, that is his opposite hind leg, and he's loading on the right hind, offloading, because horses are great hiders of information. With four legs, they get around where you and I, if we're lame, we're going to show it, because we can't hide, we can't compensate on another leg. Well, this is a very specialized piece of equipment, you were telling me. Yes, sir. It's the only one in South Carolina in private practice and in Georgia at, at the point that I know. I think there is one in North Carolina in private practice. But in uh, May of 2012, we put this machine in, and it's been a very good diagnostic tool for us. Well, Jamie, I feel like the price is right. Let's go. What's behind door number two? <laughs> okay. <laughs> And folks, here we are behind door number two. Jamie, what we got? <laughs> so, so this is our, our, mag, uh, our magnet for our MRI. This is actually a, one of the state-of-the-art magnets. It came out in, 2000, in late 2013. We were one of two clinics in North America that bought these in, in 2014. We put this in, in in May of 2014. Only two of these? Only two of these in this hemisphere. They've actually selling some more now, but this is the second one of these magnets that got in. A friend of mine in Tennessee has one, and then we put this one in. Wow. We used to have a service truck called an MR Equine that came around, and, and they no longer exist as a business. So okay. we have such a high-intensity lameness load that we actually needed MRI imaging because of stuff we can't see with regular traditional radiographs and ultrasound in the hoof or in the uh, proximal limb. We can actually do from a knee down on the front leg and from the hock down on the back leg. We can't fit the whole horse in it, of course. This is our donut here. And, but this OESTA technology, it's a, what we call a low field magnet, but it gives very high resolution images. So we can image anything from, like I said, from the knee down in the front. We do a lot of feet with this because we actually see stuff in feet that you can't see traditionally, soft tissue injuries, um, even bone injuries that you don't see on radiographs. Sometimes they show up good on MRI. And, um, you know, this, this is a pretty, pretty pricey piece of equipment, but um, we've, we've got it where it's affordable for our customers to use and for us to use as practitioners to give you the answer for your, your cases at the end of the day. And giving, giving your customers good, solid, honest information yes, so they know how to move That's, forward. That is truly our practice model here okay. at Southern Equine. We want to have a good, honest answer for someone. We want to be able to give you the right information. And kind of the way I practice medicine is I use your money like it's mine. I really do. We, um, we, we try not to do anything that we feel like is never going detriment to the horse, but we really want to be good, good to the horse owner 
give you a good result and try to, at the end of the day, get your horse back performing its job. Well, I had a situation like that, uh, and I'm not, I don't have some of the quality of horses I'm sure you're working on, but I, it was very, the horse was very important to me, and I didn't get enough inf information in front of me, and then I had to make a decision to put the horse down, and what I see here, if I was more informed, I probably could have saved that horse. Well, there's things we can do, and modern medicine has allowed us to do a lot of things, and, and at the end of the day, it's all about the horse, and that's why we added all these tools in, so we can better serve the horse community we have. Because of the horse, our life has stays on course. All right, what else we got, Jamie? I've got a kid in a candy well, this, store. This is our arthroscopy tower. It actually has a video monitor. Arthroscopy is where we put a camera that goes through into the joint, where we can look inside the joint. And so what that would do is tell us if we've got chip fractures or whatever, we can go in and remove those. We can take that out. We added this uh, two years ago. Um, my partner does surgery. We have a couple of visiting surgeons come in and do that as well. And it allows us to actually enhance that uh, performance ability of a lot of horses. We get a chip taken out or if they have a lesion in the joint, we need to debride or a tenant sheath. And I thought it was an entertainment center. <laughs> <laughs> well, folks, you've got the entertainment center is the bed over here. Yeah, and, and this is our surgery table. It's got some towels on it, but it's a, it's a pneumatic surgery table. It's MR friendly, so it's stainless steel. And what it does is we have the hoist here, so we knock the horses down in a padded room. We're able to pick them up, put them on the machine. We over, over here, we have a gas anesthesia machine. And what the gas does, it allows us to go with a little longer surgery procedure, and we're able to take that horse and, and keep them anesthetized. I told you earlier about anesthesia versus local block. And okay. This is a general anesthesia machine, so this is... Uh, this is a horse size one, so you can see all the, the, the canister here helps purify the gases back out as it comes out. Uh, oxygen's fed through to the horse and the inhalation ga gas goes in here. And so we basically then can run the oxygen level that we want to run for that horse, keep them under anesthesia for several hours. Folks, the old cowboy here has done 90 plus shows and today I feel like was one of our better ones. So much information was processed in just a short period of time. Folks, Dr. Carter and Dr. Stenner down here in Aiken, South Carolina, they got it going on. And folks, they put it in terms that we can really understand. And folks, we know we love our horses. We want to give them the best care. And I'm telling you, I think I'm going to drive a little and save a lot in the future. And folks, until next week, keep your reins low and your hands quiet. And may God continue blessing this great country of ours.